Hello, welcome to the Idea of a Man podcast. My name is Omar Zach Phillips and once again I'm so glad to be here talking to you today with regards to the Idea of a Man project that we've been going through throughout this year really. We're going to be going through from January right through to December taking us through the processes and the steps of the um, Idea of a Man project which is actually a 12-step process. Um, so each month we're focusing on one particular area like we did in January. We took the whole month to talk about who am I. In February we talked about where then do I fit and in March we looked at how do I survive. April we went through um, business, handling our business and how all those kind of things and now we're in May. What we're going to be talking about is our finances because really finances is a huge area and um, it could be the cause of much depression, it can be the cause of, cause of a lot of problems in your life um, if you don't get this area of your life right. Um, but if you can get it right, it can be a, a tremendous um, area of immense blessing. It can be an area where you begin to feel you know, like a man almost <laughs> just because you've got a bit of dough in your pocket. And so um, kind of getting a, a grasp on that element and really learning something about it can be really helpful. Now, I, I'm, I'm not sitting here as any kind of financial advisor or any expert in this matter whatsoever. Um, but like I have been doing throughout the entirety of the Idea of a Man project, I want to throw out some key concepts and principles and ideas that certainly I recognise that as men oftentimes we don't really grasp very well necessarily. Um, and some of us obviously clearly do. I mean, there's some people who've, who've got these things down packed. I get that. Um, but I, I think that we could all benefit from a few kind of tidbits of, of insight and wisdom and perspectives that could perhaps change our paradigms and our way of looking at ourselves, our lives, and our place in the world um, and just kind of move things around so that we can best place ourselves where we can profit and where we can benefit and where we can really get the most out of this game of life um, for us and really the aim behind the whole thing is so that you can have a life for you that has meaning to you. Um, when we look at the statistics of things like male suicide, of drug addiction, of incarceration, etc, um, etc, et on diagnosed depression, on diagnosed illnesses and diseases, you know, the death rates of men just in general, um, right across the board, it, it, it's debilitating, it's discouraging. And um, when I read between the lines, I see a tremendous amount of aimlessness, I see a, a lot of hopelessness, and I see a lot of confusion. Uh, I recognise we live in a, a, a world that's changed, um, the role of the man has, has really evolved, and um, we have to kind of look through, through a new lens at who we are and what we are. Things are not sort of laid out on a plate or as straightforward as they used to be. So our interactions with, say, with, with, with the female, with, with the, um, the opposite sex can be quite complicated. Um, deciding what our sexuality is, whether it is um, a member of the opposite sex with whom we want to interact or whether or not we want to interact in a, in a same-sex relationship, whatever the case may be. So there's this complexity to asking and answering all the questions for us like, who am I? Where do I fit? What do I want to do with my life? You know, and really getting those answers is such a key thing, and it's so important um, for us as individuals to kind of establish our unique identity and to go on our journey and to not um, be swayed or manipulated by external forces, but to really get something intrinsic to who we are, to get down to the core of our being, and then be confident in that, and to know that that's okay. That that you have to you once you accept yourself that you're acceptable you know there's 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 going to be people who will accept and love you for who you are and you don't need to spend your whole time and energy trying to convince others of your validity of your worth um of your value you know you need to have some value for yourself you need to look at yourself in the eye in the mirror and say you know what you and me baby we're going all the way we're gonna we're gonna do this thing we're gonna live a productive and meaningful existence and so within that context um, finances comes into it, business comes into it, which is why we talked about that throughout the month of April, handling your business, taking care of business, and you know, all, all that entails, getting yourself a side hustle, whatever the case may be. But sometimes, you know, our financial situation can kind of be quite prohibitive to us, even getting um, a, a, a rung up the ladder, or, or even getting ourselves out the door, or making any kind of move, really. We can feel so constrained by our financial situation. And so I, I want to kind of, you know, address a couple of issues. Some of us, we're living in cities, I know I did, I lived for a long time in London and um, as a city it's an extremely expensive place to live and to live any kind of quality of existence, you know, there's little tiny tiny flats and things kind of going for ridiculous amounts of money where you don't have enough room to swing a cat below and raise a family and things and um, very quickly say you fall behind in your rent or your mortgage say one month and you're looking at perhaps a thousand odd pounds a month and you know once that begins to be two, three thousand pounds in debt or you know you're in a situation whereby life can seem quite hopeless um and you're thinking how am i ever going to catch up with this you know this indebtedness um so one of the things that i want to first of all kind of 
really look at is the idea of, of, of reducing your outgoings and increasing your income, okay? It's a big concept because sometimes initially when you think about it, it just looks impossible. Cool, yeah, that'd be ideal. I'd love to increase my, uh, my income and, you know, decrease my outgoings, but how? You know, these are the bills and these are the responsibilities, but and think about it. See, this is the reason why I don't live in London, for example, anymore. Um, because I made a decision, a quality decision. I made a decision that, you know what, it's not worth it. I love London, I really, really do. It's a tremendous city, it's diverse, and there's so much things that actually do add to the quality of life. I mean, things like food, you know, the markets are tremendous, for <laughs> just getting really good quality, healthy food, which is an important thing. Um, and something that, I, in, now that I don't live in London, I have to think about it in a slightly different way. I have, to, I have to think outside the box as to how I'm gonna fulfill that element of my life, which is an important part of of, of you know of my value system so you know but changing my remit from being in a position where you know my outgoings was so extortionate and it was such a pressure and a stress to make sure I was meeting those requirements every month to be in a position where that level of pressure is not a part of my existence or experience set me free you know at the same time obviously developing myself and working on my career so before long you get to a place where your income um, increases and um, goes beyond what I was earning in London and puts me in a position where my income has increased and my outgoings have decreased considerably. Now, obviously that's that's my story and it, that's been good. It's, it, it's, it, I'm glad and I'm grateful for that. But I think that a lot of us can benefit from looking at our lives and considering the perspective from which we're living. Could we make a move? Could we go and live somewhere which still has all the amenities of the Western world? If that, if you are in the West, you may well not be. You know, you could be watching this anywhere in the world. Um, is there a way of living my life in a more holistic, more balanced way? Am I taking on responsibilities, bills, and um, requirements when actually, in the long term, when you think of a life, you know, um, over the course of it, would it really be, in, in the you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, would it be really worthwhile to look back and think, you know, I wasted all that energy and time just to pay that bill, just to pay that piece of rent? You know, I didn't even like the place, <laughs> you know, um, so. Put yourself in a position where perhaps you can get yourself somewhere that's considerably cheaper for less, you know, and, and, and then look at all the other areas, you know, maybe you're wasting money on other things that really you don't need to. Are you spending more than you need to on, on necessary food? Um, are you spending more than you need to on clothes? Are you spending more than you need to on vehicles? Are you spending more than you need to go through the various different areas of, of your expenditure and see where you can reduce your outgoing? And at the same time, think about your career. Think about the bigger things. We talked about a lot of this when we were talking about handling a business. Have a mentality of, of a real vision and an aim for what you're building um, so that you can find work that's productive and meaningful to you. Then, you know, go back and listen to some of those. But really as well, you want to think about how you can increase your income. Asking your, your boss for a pay rise, if that's feasible in the kind of work that you're doing. Um, you know, if you're in sales, how can you become a better salesperson? If you are not a salesperson, if, if you're doing sales, but you're not a salesperson, it's not intrinsic to who you are, you find yourself, you know, just just stressing out every single month, then you really have to think about what you should be doing with your life. Um, I did sales for a very, very long time, trying hard. You know, I know how to do it, but I'm not a good salesman. I'm not a good salesman because, um, not in that context, not in the sense of, of cold calling and all of those kind of things. It, you know, I just can't be twisting people's arms to do things that they don't want to do. It's 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 against my what I believe is against my fundamental values. Um, I spoke in the last video with regards to leadership. You know, um, lead your life and in any kind of capacity of leadership with other people. Um, help them be the best them that they can be. When you're just simply trying to get somebody to say yes so that you can get them to sign on the dotted line so you can take their money, um, it's not very fulfilling. And if you're not the kind of person who can quite comfortably do that, then get yourself out of that because it's just mentally and emotionally debilitating. But still, you're gonna to have to ask yourself, well, how can I, you know, if that's all you know, or that's all you've ever done, how can I bring in enough dough you know, to be able to leave that kind of a, of, of a role, whatever the case may be. So I had to say, right, well, what am I good at? I, I'm, I know that I'm good at solving people's problems and I know that I'm good at empathy. You know, I give a damn, I really care less. So, but, you know, the customer service jobs were kind of looking so much less in pay than some of the, um, the sales jobs that were out there. 
So I began to really search and really look and realize actually there's some customer service jobs that are paying more. But then I, I didn't feel quite adequate. I was like, well, you know, and then I sort of looked back at my CV and said, well, yeah, I've been around. I've done, I've done this stuff a while. Sell myself better, you know, pull myself out of the box and begin to think in a different way. And as I began to think in a different way and began to um, interact with what I wanted out of this game of life, I began to find myself in positions which were much more fulfilling to me as a person, were able to use the, the gifts and the talents that were intrinsic to who I am, um, and was able to grow out of my scenario and out of my situation and increase my income, but also to continue to decrease my outgoings. So I'm encouraging you strongly to look at that as an element of a way which you could really change your life. Be prepared to change everything. Be prepared to change everything so that you can actually be building, you know? Um, and this is, this is what this whole thing about the idea of a man is all about. So first of all, we went on that journey of, finding out who you are, where do you fit. You're building something now. You're not, now that you know who you are, now you're on the road, are the things that you're spending your money on, are the things you're spending your time doing, building this long-term process, building your life, building a life for you that has meaning to you, or are you wasting a lot of energy and effort and resources on things that ultimately don't feed your dream, don't feed your vision? So build your vision and really have a vision, have an aim and have a purpose behind what you're doing and invest your time and energy in that. And gradually, bit by bit, your financial situation will begin to change to reflect the life that you are actually building. Um, and you begin to see that you're actually making headway into something that's meaningful for you and then something that's going to be meaningful for your loved ones and for the people around you. So just little tweaks in your perspective, whether it be changing a city, whether it be changing the way that you do things on a day-to-day -day basis, the way you spend and what you spend money on. Um, I really encourage you strongly, you know, delve into this realm so that you can make your life more meaningful and also so that you can begin to perhaps, as we talked about in the, the, the business um, sections, you know, traveling through the four, the four quadrants. If you find yourself currently in a position where you're employed, um, but that's not your long-term aim, you want to get to a place, say, where your money is working for you, um, read Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and go through the stages. So first of all, see where you can get yourself self-employed. But beyond that, then begin to delegate and hire out people who can take up the slack um, and put you in a position whereby, you know, your work is getting done without you, you're predominantly leading it. And as you do, work carefully with your money so that you are investing in appreciating assets as opposed to um, depreciating liabilities. And the more you do that, the more you develop an understanding of investment in things that produce a return, you begin to come to a place where your money then begins to work for you and you're in a situation where now you're an investor and now you don't have to do a nine to five. You can kind of work when it's right for you. You can work in the night and sleep in the day or whatever the case may be. You have a lot more um, leveraged for you. So, you know, this is something that we can work towards as we grow and as we expand our consciousness, as we expand our perspective because we're building a life for us that has meaning to us, a life that is intrinsic to who we are as a unique individual. There's so much opportunities out there for us as people in this day and age, so much knowledge, so many good books that you can read, so much quality um, information on the internet and things of that kind. And sometimes, of course, you're going to have to sift through the nonsense to get to the, the meat that spit out the bones. But do that, do that work, you know, because your life is worth it. You're worth it. You're worth having an ex a quality existence and a meaningful life. I hope you've enjoyed the idea of my podcast today. We've been talking about finances. It's the first in this process. Next um, week, we're going to be talking specifically about debt because um, I've been in debt before. I know how that feels. I know how debilitating and emotionally draining that can be, how much fear and trepidation uh, every single time the postman comes to your door and puts another one of those things through there or the phone rings. And um, it's not it's not a good situation as a man. You know, and again, when we're looking at the, the statistics of things like male suicide and all of that and depression or whatever the case may be, you know, finances can play a huge part in that. So I think it's important that we talk about um, debt and, you know, how to resolve that problem, how to kind of get ourselves into a completely different situation, how to look at life objectively so that we don't allow those things to overwhelm us and to become the, the narrative or the, the story of our life. There's so much more to you as an individual and there's so much more to our existences. So go on this journey with me. Um, we're going to be talking about finances for the next three weeks after this um, before we get into the area of family and we're going to end off the year with spirit, soul and body. We've got a lot of exciting things to talk about. Um, enjoy this process and again like i said i think in the last podcast if you would like to be on a podcast with me if you'd like to talk about 
your idea of a man, please contact me by email. Visit me at theideaofaman.com and let's talk. Let's have a conversation. Let's have um, a discussion with regards to this entire area and see where these podcasts can go. Thank you for listening. Thank <music> you.